This week in the world of water, SoftBank Team Japan are the first to fully foil an attack. We're on board Super Maxi Scallywag during a race start dial-up. 52 Super Series Quantum and Platoon work together. 2016-17 Vendée Globe Report features Rich Wilson. Part 2, Sebastian Desparu. Sebastian, what's the power tools? Audi Hamilton Island Race Week wrap. And our fresh to frightening retrospective 2012 World on Water. During the, the last America's Cup, the Holy Grail was full driving and um, now, very early on, we, we got our AC72 foiling. And we're on our way, ripping downwind, both boats up on the foils. What an amazing start to this first race. Um, yeah, we've been, we've kind of always thought, I always thought that when we started this America's Cup, people would be tacking on the foils by the time we, um, we get to racing. So it's something that we kind of always had an open mind on. And we're out there, you know, nice breeze, you know, and we yeah, put the boat into attack and uh, there we were, split, sat up on the falls. The giveaway was when Chris sort of let out a, a bit of a, uh, a little giggle actually on the ice as we exited the tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first few times when it was nearly on, I was kind of almost swearing, like, oh, it's, this is so on. <laughs> but then when we actually did one, I was just was giggling away. Yeah, it was, it was, it was cool, it was a great feeling. And thought, yep, there we go, that's the, uh, the first one ticked off. And yeah, then we pulled off another one the same day. And I think yeah, it was just satisfying to think that all the work that we've been doing in terms of trying to understand the key components have sort of all played, paid off. And, and you know, there we were, you know, pulling one off. If it's anything like mock sailing, you know, it starts to open up the race course a lot more. Your options are a lot, lot wider. It's not about sailing boundary to boundary. You can tack on the shifts a lot more on demand. It's a real game changer. So, but, you know, the race is on. I think most of the teams are aware of it. But the, the game the game is on, really, to see who can, um, you know, who can actually consistently pull it off. Hello folks and welcome back. It's uh, Friday the 26th and funnily enough it's race six and uh, we're on board Scallywag today but Warwick and I just thought we'd give you a bit of a heads up, a bit of a recap on what's gone on so far. The Scallywag's doing just nicely Warwick. Had a win in the last race yesterday. Looking good. Going into a tough one today though. Yeah well they had their, their first official win. They had an unofficial win um, the day before or what, a few days before the yeah. race day before. But so in terms of the win with Lewis situation, it's two each, let, let's say, you know. Yeah, effectively. Effectively, two each between the Oats and Scallywag. If uh, the boys on board can pull out a win today, it'll be dead square again. So, so that's pretty exciting for these guys. I mean, you know, as we discussed the other day, the bar is right up here that the Oats program has been running for many, many years. And this is a new program, the Scallywag program and uh, there's a lot of learning, they're trying to understand the boat, they're, they're trying to develop the boat, they're trying to get better VPPs to understand where they can go with it. It's very much a developmental part of their program, starting from behind scratch with a whole pile of problems which is well documented, coming up here on the run, got the boat together, jumped, the crew jumped in, very dusty day the first day where the mains will come down, so it's been rugged. Learning. Learning, 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 but yesterday is there's real signs that this boat can take it to eight. There is no doubt about it. That's been proven. Yeah. And, and the thing is, if you think about, you know, the amount of development that's gone on with the oats over the last, you know, many years, that, um, sorry, we've got a bit of a runner coming in here. And we'll just uh, take, heel angle. take the yacht. <laughs> so Blake's doing well to keep us all going. But yeah, so the, the bottom line is plenty of potential. This will be exciting today, 15 to 20. Breeze back in 160, which is sort of normal around here. I'm about 20, to go over the side. 20, 20, um, uh, 26 nautical miles this race. It's a uh, passage race, a lot of ziggy zaggy in it. So it's going to be great to watch. The, a lot of crew handling will come into this one, Warwick. And, and, and the, the way the course is set up could really suit this puppy today. Get four, four tons of water ballast in on the reaches, you know, like uh, long legs. 
So it's, it's all to play for. Yeah, that's good. We're, we're coming down. We're um, around 2.30 to go. We're dialing down. It's going into a match race situation here. The Oats is uh, tacked and they're going, we're going bow to bow. We're on port, Oats on starboard. Bow to bow on Oats, we're going for a tack here. Just watch, watch it, Blake, side. watch it. Okay, Oats goes behind. They're, they're not happy with that, they're not happy with that. So now Oats is going to come up behind us, underneath us. Get ready to tack okay. is the call. Okay, so we're overlapped here. They've got up, but we've got the gas. We're gassing them out a little bit. Blake's doing his best with the camera, we're getting we're straight gonna, around. We're going to have to burn time for my, for my mind. Both boats are too early, I think. I missed that last... That last hooter. We're coming up for a minute. <laughs> that yeah, that, they were definitely... That was full on then. Both boats coming in. You know, 12, 13 knots each. Okay, Timmy Wiseman's calling up, three boatlets. He's calling up, three boatlets. We're a boatlet, they're, they're calling two. So now they're, we're, they're weather position, we've taken the lure position. We can still just make the lay. Okay, now we dial up hard, try and burn, try and burn, some time. Okay, one minute. One minute, and we're very close, we've got two. Woody's got some boats underneath. Three. Correct, we've got 40 footers. Just ahead of us, they're going slow. We're going to have to really burn here, but we've got, we've got distance, Oates I is, believe. Oates has had to wind. Yep, I've got di we've got distance to burn. Trim up, trim up. 44, David's calling for full trim. We had to go fully off on the jib then, and they've got a heap to get on. Oates has got his bow down, he's yep. uh, killed his time. Correct, 30 seconds, we've got to burn here. We've still got to burn time. Okay, we've got some... Peel candid out to weather. Okay, Matt Humphreys has just said go. Great spot. Let's go and go. Great spot, go. Scallywag. Let's go. Good start. Really good start on the Scallywag. Oats is locked in. Come around. Where's, where's Blake? Come around to the Oats. I think. I think we're. I, that was really close. Really good. Really good start. Calling for full work on the rock. So oats, oats to weather of us. Where our bow go across is just ahead of the bow sprit of oats. Okay, we're back. We've got, there's been some OCS's. Patrice has gone back, Goat has gone back. We're clear start, no work. We're, we're waiting just to confirm. Itchy Barn's gone back. There's a lot of boats gone back. Oats is pulling out of this. This will be a general. This will be a general. Cook. Yeah, general. General recall. So we're going to do all this again. One thing that's new this year for the 52 Super Series is that Quantum Racing are working with another team. Since the early part of the year, they've been working with the Harmuller Spreers Platoon, and the two teams have completely open book, share all their information, and share a coach, and it seems to be working. The day starts with a morning briefing with the key members of both teams together in the one room. The meeting is always led by James Lyne, who's the coach to both teams. They debrief the previous day's racing, really objectively looking at all the points to learn from. And then they move into the day ahead, looking at the weather, possible strategy and improvements that can be made from the previous races. So with uh, James Lyon, the coach for the Platoon and the uh, Quantum Racing, James, tell us about where the program uh, started and where you feel you've evolved to with the two boats. For me, they take a, take a lot of pictures and we're just trying to see what the differences are between Platoon, uh, Quantum Racing and uh, the rest of the fleet. And it's really just laying the information out for the sailors. Um, that's really my job is to shorten, shorten our learning time. So uh, getting the right information at the right times to the guys and uh, a little bit of data analysis here and there. 
I think for both of us, for quantum and for platoon, it's going very well because we learn from each other and um, we have a really open book. We have debriefs in the morning and we compare our data, we compare our sales, we um, speak about the setups, about the boat dream, about the tactics. So, um, I mean, quantum has um, 10 years, it's 10 years ahead of us from the times they are selling the TPs. And we are a pretty new team starting last year, so we only can learn from them. But they had no proper sparring partner last year either, so they can also benefit from what they see through us. So it's a win-win situation for both teams. The biggest objective is both teams were just trying to get better. And working side by side with one unified coach, you know, who details and quantifies everything, it's just been amazing how detailed you can come in and analyze every little aspect of what took place on the race course. Harm, um, tell us about the change to uh, quantum sales. You were with North for a long time. It's not a big difference between uh, the quality of both sail makers. They can make both uh, fast sales. We made the decision because we, we want to go for this season for a two-bro program with sharing all information. And from my point of view, it worked out. The improvement, especially for us, is massive because sharing information is uh, making you more secure. What can to happen if you change this or this and if you're just sailing beside each other with two different boats which are not sharing all the information you never know exactly what gonna be the difference and right now when we have the possibility to sail with open books and we change something in the boat you exactly know right now you're faster or slower and that makes a huge difference after three regattas, Quantum Racing lead on 78 points, Azura 135 and Platoon and Ran Racing on 140. So I think there's no doubt that this two-boat programme is working for both teams. I think it's a trend that's going to continue with the 52 Super Series and may even expand in the future. Boats on TV and the World on Water presents the 2016-17 Vendée Globe Report. This week, two of the lesser known entries, Rich Wilson and Sebastian Desmarou. As a sailor, I knew about a race called the Vendée Globe, and I'd never had any interest whatsoever in racing this race course is around the world, single-handed, non-stop. It's too hard, it's too long, it's too dangerous, the boats are too far from land for help. Yet, it might provide an opportunity to create a global school program. The first two gales we had, or seven gales, were hurricane force. You watch them coming along on the weather maps, and you know you're just going to get hammered, and there's nothing you can do about it. Racing an Open 60 single-handed is like having a premium cable subscription, where all of the channels are on one monitor, and they're all going at the same time. It's just on and on and on and on. At one point there, coming up the Atlantic, it was just so hard, and it was so long, it was upwind. And I called Dr. Barney Walden and said, okay, you're the emergency doc, but you gotta turn it into a shrink and help get me home. Greetings from Great American 3, at five degrees south of the Southern Hemisphere. When I finished that race, uh, without trying to be dramatic about it, I thought that there was some chance I might never go sailing again. I was just done. But over the course of time, I started to rethink that. Welcome to the office. Oh! Oh! An office uh, where everybody is working. Um, yeah, 
Hey, I am Mark. We're just going to go through uh, what's happening uh, around the base ocean. Uh, at the moment, Jacko is working at the top of the mast, uh, putting all the gear together up there, the electronics. Uh, so, Jibe and uh, Zongi are working inside here to cut uh, the box here that is going to be removed to save weight. Uh, I'm sending the back of the boat because it needs to be painted and look nice and tidy. And everybody is working flat out. And uh, the launch of the boat is uh, scheduled for August 22nd, uh, which is uh, just a few days uh, away. So it's all happening. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, uh, a lot of stress, but uh, the team is working good and I'm sure we'll be meeting all the deadlines as well. Well, Kimberly, I can't believe we've come to the end of another Audi Hamilton Island Race Week. What an outstanding week it's I'm been. actually a little bit sad, Dean. I mean, from a social point of view, it has been absolutely incredible. We've had the most talented chefs, exquisite champagne, world-class events, and it, it's just been unreal. And on the water, 252 yachts, a record fleet. The Australian Yachting Championships have been decided this week for the second time in a row here at Hamilton Island. And of course, we had the Olympic sailing team just to top the week off in Front Street. It's been incredible. Well, those are just a couple of our highlights. So let's show you the week that was.
Let's revisit the world on water 2012, where it's pressed to frightening. In this week's Fresh to Frightening, we look at Point Panic, Honolulu, Hawaii, and Captain Raff and Duke, who were caught inside on Big Saturday, March 20, 2010. They were taking out a group of tourists on their 40-foot sailboat for an ash-scattering ceremony in Waikiki Harbour, when a huge set rolled into the channel outside the harbour buoy. With no time to avoid the waves, Captain Raff faced the waves head-on, while Duke held onto the mast for dear life. Meanwhile, the surfers on their surfboards, waiting for the perfect wave, looked on in disbelief. At first, it was a necessity to feed our families, to explore new worlds. And we became one with the sea. We harnessed the water and wind and used the stars to guide us. In that vastness, we created speed and discovered freedom. The sea called us, and our desire for adventure was too instinctive to ignore. So we did it for pleasure, camaraderie, and the challenge. We bestowed it to our children, and they to their children. Now, to know it is to know ourselves. We need it, no longer for survival, but to escape to pursue adventure and overcome nature's elements, to match wits against those who share the same calling, or to simply glide across unbroken water in peace.